All right, everybody, welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. This is Jeremy Ricci, and I want to welcome our special guest, Tom Robinson of Robinson Insurance. And we're going to talk a little bit about property insurance for investors and some of the peculiarities of that. So, welcome to the show, Tom. Thanks, Jeremy. So, what can you tell us about, you know, number one, about flipper insurance? I, let's talk about that first compared to landlord insurance. So, if there's people that are out there fixing and flipping houses, what do they need to know? What kind of insurance do they need? Basically, it depends on the type of flip they're doing. Um, if, there's, if you're talking about just a cosmetic flip, there's insurance for that. If you're talking about a major renovation, adding on stories, uh, uh, the house, square footage, stuff like that, then there's builder's risk policies that are a little more involved, basically. What would they call, so builder's risk is the one where you do a major renovation, yeah. and what's, what do they call the uh, other type? Pretty much just a vacant, uh, it's a vacant insurance policy basically because the property is vacant at the time, so you want to make sure it's covered properly. And if you're in the business of fixing and flipping houses, you probably should have some sort of general liability policy as well, like just to cover if, the business for. If you're not, if you're not doing the actual work, absolutely. Okay, so if you're doing the work, you know, obviously there's risk of people getting hurt on the job site. There's all sorts of things. Is that? Different, different kind of insurance. Different kind of insurance. Different kind of insurance for that, for that uh, type of risk. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm curious, Tom. So, so what happens is, you, you know, so somebody buys a house. I mean, most people listening to our show have probably bought a house that they live in, so they have to get insurance typically because the mortgage company is making them get insurance, and they're also going to live there. So that's a what kind of policy is that? If they're going to live in the house, that would be uh, a, a form of homeowners insurance, depending on the type of policy that they would. Uh, would like to have most most people should have what's called an HO three policy. Okay, it's a more comprehensive coverage. Um, so what does that cover? That covers if the place burns down, for example. Uh, uh, basically, fire, theft, liability, vandalism, wind and water damage, the covered water damage, and that's the main four to five claims that happen have something to do with water damage. So you always want to make sure you have some sort of water damage coverage okay. on an owner occupied. Or a tenant occupied. It's a little more difficult to get the water damage um, with some of the carriers on the um, the vacants um, and the builder's risk. But so then I then I become a landlord and I have a policy. Is it, what kind of policy is that for a landlord to have to rent to someone? Well, um, that would be a uh, what's called a dwelling policy. Is what you would have okay. that would cover you for the structure of the house. Um, incidental con uh, contents if you have like a refrigerator washer and dryer that might be the yours and not the tenants um, but the tenants would be responsible for their own uh, contents um, but you would basically be it would, it would basically be a homeowner's policy um, without the theft coverage because okay. you, you can't really steal the house so one of the things I always worry about is my tenants my own tenant slipping and falling inside the property I'm renting to them mm -hmm. what covers them do, do I have a liability on, on my policy or is it their tenant policy. No, no, it's 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 your policy. You your policy should have liability on it. Uh, you should also have the tenants ha uh, have their own insurance policy, which is called a uh, renter's policy. And the reason for that is because that policy also has uh, liability on it to where if they did something um, that caused someone to get hurt that you were not negligent about. Um, it's basically it's an extra layer of liability between you and a lawsuit, and it also shows, you know, good. Uh, it, it's a good tenant that's going to take the time to spend the hundred and fifty dollars to get a renter's insurance policy for themselves. Yeah. Plus, it's an extra, uh, like I said, it's an extra layer of liability to keep you out of a lawsuit. Uh, biggest easiest example is somebody had a um, somebody would have like a party at the house. Somebody drank too much and somebody fell. Well. You as the owner of the property, uh, where's your negligence? You're, there's no negligence there on you, um, but if the tenant didn't have liability insurance on them for themselves, uh, you're still going to be named in it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, like I said, just an extra layer between the two. So, so you would then ask to, to be named as an additional insured on their policy, so that that way um, you know if they cancel it or not, things like that. Uh, Yes, the, the, the short answer to that is you can be um, added on to that. In fact, we have a bunch of, um, uh, um, uh, what are they? I was 
my train of thought. Sorry, so like yeah, things yeah. like uh, additional assured or additional interest mm -hmm. would be would, would be in this a case, a right? Absolutely. That's a lot of management guys are getting a lot of management companies who are managing real estate for people. That's the new thing. They want to be added on as additional insured for liability. Right, well, that's kind of where I, I'm going with this question is, what if we did this? I mean, if it only costs 150 bucks for a renter's policy, I can tell you from my experience of renting to hundreds and hundreds of people for, for 27 years, nobody ever gets it. So if it's only 150 bucks, what if we took 75 bucks out of their initial deposit that they give us and kicked in half, okay? to get them to, na to get a good, policy. Yeah. And we did that as a standard thing every time, so it only cost them an extra $75 to insure all of their stuff. Then, is that something we could work out with you? You could absolutely work out, but if you're, you're basically, it sounds like you're going halfway. I mean, if it's $150, it's 15 bucks a month, it's just easier to put it in the lease that they have to maintain it. Do you have other and, landlords that do that? Um, they're, st they're coming up, I have a couple that, We'll do that, absolutely. What if, what if you just require them to and, and show you proof that they got it? And if they don't, then you take it out of the security deposit and go buy it for them. Because it makes it more difficult for you to close the deal. As a salesman, you're a landlord. You got somebody in front of you. You want to close the deal. You don't want to force them to get insurance. But it, it, this way, it's almost like you're doing them a favor. Say, look, it's only 75 bucks. You put up 75, I'll put up 75, right? An extra 75 and a check you're about to cut me. No, I, I was like, I like the idea of, of putting it in, in the lease. You know, it's an extra 20 bucks. A month, and we we will buy your homeowner's insurance for you, your renter's insurance. Right? So yeah, right, your renter's insurance for you, and it'll cover your it'll cover your goods. It'll cover. So everything. you mean you just pad the rent yeah, to, to cover rent. the cost, and we sure. pay for the policy. That's yeah. not. It's actually a really good idea. Just instead of going half halfway, and you're still doing the extra work, going back and forth trying to get the other. Well, hand. at least you know it's with a good company too. That it, right. they're not just getting it. Right. But sure. now here's the other. And you thing. know it's renewed because you're renewing it. Right. Well, here's the other thing. If you're if if uh, I've gone to the tenants and said, look, you you. Sometimes these companies offer you like a multi-policy discount. Is that true? True. So, so if you say, well, go to the go to your car insurance company and ask them about adding the renter's policy. One hundred percent. If yeah. uh, if if they sit there and they have a couple cars, the discount on their car insurance will probably pay for the renter's. Insurance. Yeah. So that then it's like getting it for free. Yeah. Well, how much is a renter's policy on average? Uh, one hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. So on a good average. So yeah. So then. So if you yeah, get, I actually like the idea of adding it yeah. to the policy. So if you got a duplex yeah, and we and we got both floors with their own renters and insurance policy, then the owner's policy might have a nice discount. No. <laughs> no. I see you the know, angle you're trying to make. Nice try, nice try, nice try, but no. no. <laughs> hey, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. you know, I'm just working it, man. Get, I'm get trying that, to work get, it. Get that one through the insurance department. Try it. <laughs> nope. There's something that a lot of landlords run into, and what about these, uh, some insurance companies not allowing, they have this like vicious dogs, uh, or vicious breeds uh, thing. There's, have you seen a lot of that? Some, a lot, some do, some don't? Some do, some don't. Some uh, have it, um, yeah, yeah. There's the there's the dog list that, that they have. Some companies uh, do not want you to have those type of dogs, and it's some of them will allow you as long as there's no bite history um, with the dog. Um, how, do you, how, do you research, dog how do you research? How do you research a bite history? Uh, there there must be something. I, I have that's the National have, Registry for Dog Bites. Where, where there is a well, you asked it. You're asking the question. Yeah. So and they're signing that the dog has no bite history. Yeah. So in other words, okay. if there's another gotcha. if there's another dog bite, it's Technically, you're fraudulent yeah. on the application. So. you got to look for oh. the dogs that have a well, tear, teardrop tattooed next to their eye. Right? I've never <laughs> been bitten by a dog. However, recently a dog did make me feel uncomfortable. Can I sue? <laughs> you can, anybody can sue anybody for anything. Uh, but, uh, but no, but the, uh, the, the reason behind the, the dog list is, and, and I talk to people every day uh, who have very nice pit bulls and Dobermans and Shepherds and whatever else is on the list, um, but the problem is, uh, in, basically, in the courts, if if you have a uh, poodle that bites someone, or you have a pit bull that bites someone, and does the same damage. The amount that the insurance companies are paying are much greater, mm -hmm. just from just from on the pit on the pit bulls, just from reputation. Now, my tenant, none of my tenants have pit bulls. They all have American Staffordshire Terriers. Absolutely. And then, and then I'm like, come on, that's a pit bull. Yeah, stop, they, stop they, trying to yeah, sneak it by. They, 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 yep, they, they always they they play that game. Yeah. yeah, but with also with, uh, um, with a lot of pro uh, properties, if you're buying a property that you're going to hold and rent, uh, if it has a pool, 
a lot of companies will not put right. a dwelling policy yeah. on a property. You probably got kids pool. falling in the pools and things like well, that. Well, it's just an extra liability, and it's, they just don't. Sure. They just don't add it. Trampolines are the same kind of thing. You got to be careful with trampolines and stuff like that. So, so all three of us buy properties in trusts. Mm -hmm. So you know, none of the properties are in our name. How does that affect our policies? Um, that you would have to talk to the lawyer about, basically. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, I have a lot of people who are buying uh, LLCs, and, right. you know, but basically um, anybody can, doesn't, doesn't insurance, stop somebody from Insurance is your first, first line of defense. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. It, just, it just slows well, things down. I wasn't trying to say, I, I was trying to say, how does it affect the price of the policy? <laughs> not, not at all. Okay. Not that, at all. That's what I meant. I, I know what you're, where you're they going. Right. They still asked who uh, the, the principals of the trust uh, because they still, that's how they can find uh, claims. Uh, and a lot of, uh, most of the insurance companies all use uh, insurance scoring now. Mm -hmm. So somebody who has um, good to excellent credit, it's not the same, but good to excellent insurance scoring can actually sometimes pay half as much as someone well, who doesn't. So it's, well, yeah. Do we, have to, do we have to be concerned when we're buying a property if the property itself has had claims? Uh, isn't there like a database that the insurance guys look into? Yeah, it's called, yeah, it's called A plus um, is what it usually is, uh, or Choice Point. And basically, most of the insurance companies, um, the, the claim follows the buyer. Okay, so if there's the a homeowner. claim. So the homeowner is the one that's following the, the claim. The person purchasing the house. The, buyer, the yeah. person who sold the house, um, even though there was a claim at that house, um, it doesn't affect the okay. buyer. A couple companies it does um, as a, as an agent, so in other words, I see somebody, that house had four claims in five years, I get a little leery and have to really make sure that they had a really good home inspection. Yeah, was it the person that Correct. Filed the, the, files more claims than they should? Correct. Or finding things, things that would be wrong? Yeah. I, I, I'll tell you what, I'd bet you anything that Macaroni's house is one of those houses. <laughs> <laughs> does, does he even own a house? <laughs> you don't own a house yet? He, we, we'd be afraid. Yeah, you should buy a rental yeah. property. You don't need to own the one you live in, but you should buy a rental property. We'd, ah. okay. We'd be afraid to rent him a property because he might be cooking macaroni and put the house on fire. <laughs> That's okay. It won't be under my name. It'll be in a trust and it'll be insured by Tom, so it doesn't matter. So if you want to burn it down, it's okay. I don't know about that. Well, don't thanks, don't thanks, say that in front of your insurance agent. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Jeez. So the other real question, yeah. you know, catastrophic insurance. Uh, you know, again, how does that work for us as real estate investors? Should we have a catastrophic policy? What is catastrophic? Yeah, m well, most, most most umbrella is what I mean, right? Well, umbrella, yeah. yeah. Liability, you know, basically, insurance companies, not insurance companies, but people who sue are are going for the limit. I mean, if somebody something catastrophic happens, how much liability is enough liability? Basically, is what it comes down to. So they they look at the limit. They're not. Going yeah. over usually don't go over and above that. They go for the low-hanging fruit. Yeah, that's all they because they get the cash from the uh, from the insurance companies. It's easier. Okay, that's pretty, yeah, that's pretty good. You know, I also wondered how that works with with trusts. How do we get liability insurance? How do we get catastrophic liability insurance on, on our trusts? Would you insure yourself? I don't know. I don't either. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> I mean, the trust can't do anything negligent. Yeah, <laughs> right. 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 Okay. Yeah. So yeah. we still we should get yeah. it separately. Yeah, absolutely. So it, anything else that that landlords or real estate investors. Uh, need to know about as far as, um, you know, any, any things that you see that they, ought, they do wrong? Or? Uh, no, just in, in, insure correctly. I've come across um, quite a few times over doing this now for 30 years where basically um, I give someone a quote and it is a vacant risk. They call me back and tell me their agent, and won't mention any companies, oh, they can do it for this. Well, when we look at it, the policy, they write a regular dwelling policy on it, and um, the, 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 once they write the dwelling policy on it, once a pro property is vacant for 30 days, it loses its vacancy. Yeah. So therefore, it was not a very good uh, policy. Okay. Well, it was a great talk. Uh, you're going to stick around with us for the last segment? Wouldn't miss it. Okay. So, I mean, in summary, there's three things that are really dangerous. Pit bulls, Dobermans and macaroni. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So stick around as we discuss how to learn about real estate investing without paying $35,000 for a course. You are listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back.